Hey guys, I'm gearing up to make a kit wine, but before I show you guys how to make a kit wine, I figured I'd put together a video kind of showing all the things you need to buy if you're going to make a wine from a concentrate kit. Uh, the kit that I'm going to go ahead and make, this is a Cellarcraft Showcase uh, edition, and I like these kits because of the amount of juice that they come with. So to make a six gallon batch of wine, they'll actually provide you with 4.75 gallons of concentrate slash juice, which is really phenomenal. Um, and the other thing that's nice about these kits is they also provide uh, grape skins with the kits. So this is kind of a pack of kind of goo slash grape skin slash some concentrate that they claim is actual varietal skin. So this being an old vine zin, these should be old vine zin um, skins from that exact lot. Um, I've also got a Sonoma Valley cab that I'll be doing. But there are some things that these kits usually do provide you. Uh, they come with a handful of little packets, whether it be a cheap kit or an expensive kit. In general, they'll provide you with the very, very basics to complete your fermentation. Um, it comes with yeast. That's pretty standard with anything. Um, potassium metabisulfite instructions. Uh, some... This is bentonite, which is a clearing agent. Um, I probably won't use it because I generally don't follow the four to six week um, range when I make a kit like this. And if you're gonna do something more like six months, the clearing agents are a little bit less necessary. Um, this looks like some uh, Cheeto San uh, Kisolol. And again, like I probably won't use it, but it comes in the kit and some potassium sorbate, which same thing, if you're gonna let this wine run dry, um, you'd probably don't need it. A lot of the stuff in these kits is kind of geared towards the person who's gonna bottle these things in four weeks or six weeks. There's really no guarantee it's really gonna truly be dry. Um, and also there's really no guarantee that everything's really settled out of the kit. Um, these Cellar Craft kits, because they come with the skin pack, comes with a kind of like a cheesecloth type thing here to wrap the skins in that you can use just to keep things a little cleaner. And then these come with a handful of different um, oak packets for use at different times. So the premium kits will usually come with the oak packets. Um, all, mostly all the kits will come with everything else here. And then again, the premium kits generally come with more juice. And um, if it's a red wine, oftentimes they'll come with a skin pack. But let's talk about if you want to buy a kit like this. Um, the kit includes really most of what you need to get going, but the thing it doesn't include is the equipment side of things. And it's really nothing too crazy, but you do need to buy some things before you can get started. And the first thing you're gonna need is something to complete your primary fermentation in. So I just have a six gallon bucket here. Um, this bucket has a lid, but you don't even really need a lid. You can put a towel over the bucket. During the primary fermentation, a little bit of oxygen is not actually a bad thing. You're really just trying to keep the fruit flies out during that time. So six gallon bucket, preferably food grade. You can buy these at the brew store. Um, you can get these if you buy um, fresh grape juice to make wine out of. A lot of times they come in a bucket like this. And everything I list in the video um, I'll list in the description and I'll put a link to all of those items so that you can buy them if you want. Um, after you get done in your bucket, you're going to need a carboy because after primary fermentation settles down, the wine stops producing CO2, uh, you're really going to want to limit the oxygen content. And these carboys are nice. They neck down to a small surface area at the top. and. Uh, and they're super, super airtight, and that's exactly what you want as you kind of bring your wine into the aging period. But to make the bucket, um, or to make the carboy truly airtight, you need a bung and an airlock. And there's a couple different kinds of airlocks. This is the um, double bubble or S type, some people call it. There's kind of a cup in cup style. I prefer this type. It's a little bit easier to tell if the wine's still bubbling. And also, even if it gets down to the slightest drop of water um, in the airlock, uh, it'll still create a seal. 
So that'll kind of get you started. Those are kind of the very, very first things that you need to even remotely get started with making your wine. But as the wine goes on, you're gonna need a handful of other things um, to transfer the wine, which you're gonna be doing from time to time, from bucket to carboy or from um, carboy to bottle. You're gonna need a racking cane and a tube. I like these stainless steel racking canes because they're still pretty cheap. Um, I want to say this one's about like 10 bucks and this thing will last me my whole life. Um, I started out when I very first started in winemaking. Um, I had a plastic cane and they're a little bit harder to keep clean um, and also eventually you'll probably break it as it kind of gets old and, and uh, beat up. Um, you may want to consider more oak than the kits come with or even better oak than the kits come with. Um, I like these premium American oak cubes. These are medium toast. You can get different toast levels. You can get diff oaks from different regions, which are actually in some cases different species. Um, you have American oak, French oak, Hungarian oak. French and Hungarian, same species, um, different regions. American oak, different species, a little bit more of what you would kind of consider that, that oaky flavor in a wine. <clears throat> um, another thing you're going to need is just to kind of keep things clean in the process. Again, not 100% necessary, but I like to have some sanitizer on hand. This stuff is star sand. Um, you can also use things like um, Be Bright, which is very similar to OxyClean. Um, the Be Bright's great for rough cleaning. It's more of a cleaner, um, but it's also kind of an oxidizer. So you really want to rinse really, really good if you use that. And Star Sand is less of a cleaner, but more of a sanitizer. So that's going to really kill all those little microbes, but it's not really going to deal with the rough um, grime. You could use soap, uh, but you're going to have to wash the heck out of it before you actually uh, put any wine in there. And I truly, really, really recommend against using bleach. Uh, there's, of course, bleach does kill the microbes, but the problem with bleach is um, TCA, which is cork taint. You've heard people say corked wine. You get a corked wine, you send it back. Well, with any of the molds to create TCA, um, which again is cork taint, it won't actually turn into TCA without that chlorine component. It's trichloroanisole. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's a kind of a mouthful. But if you keep a chlorine-free environment, you really just reduce the risk of um, cork taint in the wine. Um, another thing the kits won't come with uh, are bottles. So you can buy these at the brew store. Uh, you can also just take bottles from wines that you've drank clean the labels off and um, and clean the bottles well to use those. That's really up to you. What, the wine kits occasionally will come with labels for bottles, but that's really up to you if you really want that. Um, actually, before I get to this, a bottle filler. So bottle fillers go onto the end of your siphon tube that's on your racking cane. These are my favorite types of bottle fillers here. So this one just has a valve on the end that when you kind of set it down, it fills, and when you lift it, it stops. Some of these valves have a spring on the end. I, I don't prefer the ones with the spring, and the reason why is you have to actually press down, so you can't really multitask. You always have to have a hand on it, whereas the gravity style ones where you just let go of it, you can let go of it, you know, get a cork ready, get all ready to go, come back, pull it out, and it's kind of a no-handed operation. And um, the kits generally won't come with corks either. So these are um, Aquamark corks. These are my favorite corks. And you can get a hundred pack of these for about um, $23. You can get corks cheaper. And if you're not gonna let your wine go for more than a year or so, you don't have to buy that premium of cork. Um, you can buy like the $14 corks. But if you want to, if you want to shelf it for say two plus years, that's when you want to step into something like the Aquamark cork. That's um, really not very permeable. The wine really won't soak up it. Uh, it'll last really long. You shouldn't really have any trouble. And then the last thing that I'm going to recommend is um, a corker. So this is your generic cheap 
hand corker. You put it on the bottle, you slide your cork in here, press it in and cork it. And these are great for beginners, but if you do think you're gonna stick with the hobby for a while, you can get a, uh, a floor corker. So these cost a little bit more money, but they're a little bit easier to use. They do a much cleaner job. Um, they make a nice smooth top of the cork versus a hard dimple on the top that the hand corkers usually make. Uh, but again, if you're, if you're not sure if you wanna stick with the hobby, maybe get the hand corker to start out with. That's really up to you. But those are the main things you're gonna need if you wanna make a kit from wine. And the cool thing is once you've bought all those things, you can keep those for a really, really long time and they're gonna carry you on through. So you're really only gonna have that big expense for the very first kit that you make. And um, from there on out, you're good to go. Um, also, a lot of those things, I mean, virtually everything I've mentioned here is gonna be good for you, whether you're making it from a kit, whether you're making it from fresh juice, whether you're making it from grapes. So if you're gonna get into the hobby, all stuff you need, not, none of it's particularly expensive. You'll probably have um, $80 into all this stuff, depending on whether you get it online, get it on Craigslist, um, get it from friends. You could do cheaper, you could do more expensive, but that's really what you're gonna need to get. What I'll do also is I'll, I'll post an article on my website, smartwinemaking.com, so you don't have to keep rewatching this video over and over if you're trying to go through your list. And uh, if you do have any questions on making your kit, make sure you hit me up in the comments and uh, good luck on making your wine. Thanks for watching.